Hello, it's Jasper. I'm very excited to come to you with part three of the GeoGuessr Canada guide. I'm still trying to figure out the optimal length for these guides since the BC video was a bit longer than I planned. Let me know in the comments what you think. I still feel like 20 to 30 minutes is a reasonable length, uh, but I'm definitely open to feedback. And there are always some tips and tricks that are right on the margin in terms of how useful they are, right? So longer, shorter, it, it really is doable. But today we're going to talk about the Canadian prairies. And we're going to cover the provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Now, Alberta, the furthest west of the three, is sometimes thought of as being full of mean-spirited people who are, think they're better than everyone else. And that's totally unfair. But in any case, you'll come to understand that Alberta is feel full of beautiful landscape and large houses because of the strong economy. Meanwhile, Saskatchewan is known for jokes about how flat it is, and one good sitcom that ended in 2009. And Manitoba is mostly known for freezing winters and black flies. In case any of you are wondering, I am from Alberta. Now I'm going to start with three still images, one from each of the three provinces, and then we'll come back to them right at the end. Each of these images have at least three major meta clues that allow you to region guess or even city guess the exact location. Now feel free to pause if you want, see how many clues you can pick up on already, uh, but for the record I'm not counting license plates in these meta because they're pretty hard to see without zooming in on the pictures. Now, First, let's look at the coverage in the prairies. So again, as with BC, it's almost all in the southern half. And let's just note the coverage that does go to the north. So there's two roads running up to northern Manitoba, uh, ending in Flin Flon on the left and Thompson uh, right around here. And then the furthest north in Saskatchewan goes to La Ronge, which is on the map, and uh, Clearwater River, which isn't labeled here. And then Alberta has some more further north roads uh, they lead to cities like Fort McMurray, Grand Prairie, and High Level, um, and then even all the way up into the Northwest Territories. Alberta has a few specific meta clues to recognize, some of which are well known and some less so. Uh, the Alberta bollard is pretty well known in the GeoGuessr community, it's shown in the top left. And despite its name, the Alberta bollard can be found in Saskatchewan, uh, but it's much more rare. This is partly due to conscious choice and partly because Saskatchewan roads are so straight they rarely use bollards on or any other road markers, really. Now, to the right, we have rural road signs. Alberta marks almost every dinky gravel road with its own road sign. And that's not true in the States. It's not true in Saskatchewan or Manitoba. Um, they're nearly always blue. These rural intersections usually also have bollards at them, so the blue signs can be redundant, but it's still helpful in a lot of circumstances. I will quickly remind you of the Alberta license plate and area codes. Alberta does not use front plates, and all of their plates are tinted with red. The 780, 780 area code is used up north, including the city of Edmonton, while 403 down south includes cities like Calgary, Red Deer, and Lethbridge. Now, a common feature of metal guardrails in Alberta is to end with this yellow-black square. You can certainly see that in other provinces and states, and I think even countries. Um, but that's for Alberta. Alberta guardrails also often have white reflectors on them or yellow if it's a divided highway, it's in the center of the road. Um, finally, Alberta utility poles, when they have three cables, they'll always look like this, with the center cable going directly over the main pole. Uh, you'll see why this is useful when we contrast it to the other prairie provinces. Now, Saskatchewan has relatively fewer meta clues, in my opinion. Saskatchewan rarely uses bollards, but when they do, they are the same as Alberta. Rural Saskatchewan often uses white arrows on the stop signs, and they're called crossroad delineators. There can be one, two, or three arrows, and they denote how major the road is that you're going to turn on to. The most important clue for Saskatchewan is probably the license plate, though, to differentiate it from Alberta. It's got the faint green lettering that's otherwise rare in Canada or the U.S., really. Uh, metal guardrails in Saskatchewan typically end with this open loop here. And the area code for Saskatchewan is 306. And then finally, let's talk about utility poles in Saskatchewan. So utility poles in every province in Canada, they can resemble the same as Alberta, where the center cable goes directly over the main beam, and that can happen a lot in the States too. But in Saskatchewan, you're much more likely to see this pattern, where the center cable on these utility poles goes to either the inside or the outside of the center pole. Now, most of the time, this pattern alternates in Saskatchewan. See, it goes inside, outside, and keeps alternating. Uh, you can see that alternating pattern in some other provinces as well, but never in Alberta. So it's perfect if you're stuck between those two. 
And then finally, let's look at Manitoba Meta. Manitoba bollards are similar to Alberta bollards here, but they lack the extra white reflector at the top. And they also often have bits of orange somewhere on the bollard. Now, Manitoba uses bollards less than Alberta, but more than Saskatchewan, which is just good to know. Manitoba occasionally uses cement guardrails in the center of the highway. It seems to always have these yellow reflectors, but I'm sure I'm wrong. Uh, their metal guardrails are very similar to Saskatchewan, but if you are right next to one, you can see that the end slightly differently. They've got this metal donut hole in the center of the, the circle end that Saskatchewan doesn't have. Now, metal guardrails are common all over the world, and there'll always be exceptions uh, and twins to the guardrails I'm showing here. Um, but I will say by far the most common way for metal guardrails to end is by just slowly sloping towards the ground. And that can happen in all three provinces and you can't tell the difference. But these three ends I've shown seem to be unique to each province and a good way to tell them apart. Um, Manitoba area code is 204. If you're having a hard time remembering either the area code or the license plate here, which is quite recognizable with the green, I recommend going back to my episode one of the Canada series where I outline that kind of meta. And Manitoba utility poles, I'll cover here, uh, they can be tricky. They're mostly characterized by randomness when it comes to that classic three cable pattern that we've compared between the three provinces. So you'll see the cable directly over the middle on one side alternating, and you'll often see all three kind of right up against each other. They flip a coin each time they put up a utility pole. So that's one way to kind of tell Manitoba apart, but it's obviously not consistent in every um, format. Uh, Manitoba, I think, has slightly more than some other provinces, uh, these utility poles with a very straight, very tall little cables holding up the, or coils holding up the cables. Um, this one's kind of doing a Naruto impression, and you see a lot less of that in the other prairie provinces, at least, but I'm sure you'll see versions of this everywhere. And then uh, the last, I think, fairly well-known bit of meta is this white and green reflector on rural stop signs. So between the white and green reflector, the white arrows in Saskatchewan, and the Alberta bollards and blue street sign, you should always know which prairie province you're in at a rural intersection. If you don't see any of these, at least consider the U.S. or other options. Okay, general geography. In the northern hemisphere, winds generally blow east off the Pacific, or east off the Atlantic, I'm pretty sure. So Fun science is behind that, but what it means for us is the warm ocean air leads to a bit of a diagonal line along which the climate looks somewhat similar. So this is also related to why Yukon is more populated than Nunavut and has more trees in the last video. Uh, you can see the same thing in Greenland too, for that matter. But what it means is that parts of southern Saskatchewan, kind of around Swift Current where there's lots of road lines here, are often what I think of as classic Canadian prairies. You put your favorite joke about Saskatchewan in the comments, because the last time I drove through Saskatchewan, I was sitting there for 30 minutes before I realized I ran out of gas. It's flat, it's grass, it's nothing. Um, the far west of Alberta kind of obviously looks the same as British Columbia, and it slowly transitions into foothills, which is kind of the coverage I've shown here. And then after the foothills, I just want to note some surprising areas that aren't flat in this coverage. The badlands around Drumheller, which is dinosaur country in Alberta, it's definitely an outlier and doesn't look anything like the land even pretty close to it. And then sometimes you'll find a few random hills around southern Alberta or southern Saskatchewan. And it's otherwise some of the flattest regions in the whole bunch. But of particular note is a series of buttes in Montana, which are visible from miles away from far south of Alberta because of how much prominence they have. And then a few more hilly regions exist, especially where you won't see so much, uh, so many blue lines here for because there's fewer farm coverage there. Um, you'll see more lakey regions, and that can tip you off that that might be where these prairie hills are. Anyway, next, a return favorite from the BC video, which is the trembling aspen. Now, a transitionary zone between the Canadian prairies and the Canadian shield further north is aspen parkland. So, this map here provides a general sense of where you might find such geography. It's generally flat, but with more trees than we saw in southern Alberta or Saskatchewan. And among these trees, there's a lot of the white barked aspen, same thing we covered in BC. There's also some birch, which is kind of looks similar, but it you should be fairly recognizable. 
I associate Aspen grows most strongly with Manitoba. Um, but again, we see this kind of diagonal line across the prairies in which the terrain will stay somewhat similar, varying with elevation, latitude, and all of these things kind of combining to make that diagonal line. And this is why the northwestern Alberta, which is known as the Peace Region, can be such a frustrating region to guess. I'll try my best to give tips for differentiating it from regions further south during the rural meta, because it can look very similar despite being very far away from the same coverage. First, let's talk city meta. I've been looking forward to talking about prairie cities for a while, for some obvious reasons, it's where I live. But we're covering the starred cities, going Alberta, and then Saskatchewan, and then Manitoba, from the largest city to the smallest in each province. The cities with circles will only be referenced if necessary. Now, the best way to learn these cities will be to play the Prairie Cities map that I'll link in the description. We'll start with the biggest city in Alberta, which is Calgary. Calgary is usually easy to guess. It doesn't look like any other cities in the world, really, to me. It's the only city in this group in the foothills, so everything is hilly. But Alberta just doesn't look much like other provinces that could have hilly cities like this. Note how many spruce trees there are because uh, we're at higher elevations. So that's the evergreens here. And Calgary loves to have spruce trees that butt right up against people's homes. Even with all these trees, I tend to find that the, you just see further in Calgary than you normally would in uh, out east where the trees get a lot denser. So that's another kind of way of making sure you're in the right region. But we don't need generic tree clues. If you've ever seen a fire hydrant like this before here, this light green fire hydrant with black nozzles, then I'll be surprised. This is exclusive to Calgary. And we're back to my favorite fire hydrant meta. Or it was until 2018, when Brandon Manitoba decided to start installing exactly the same fire hydrants. Now, uh, if you didn't figure it out before, every color on this map corresponds to that city's fire hydrants, the body of the fire hydrant. Hopefully you notice a bit of a pattern that helps you to kind of remember where the general color regions are in the prairies so that you don't have to remember for each city. Um, really, you should never confuse Brandon and Calgary though. Calgary is much bigger, hillier, and it has Alberta license plates and Alberta meta. Calgary also uses this dark blue bus stop. Uh, it's reasonably unique. And then they use red buses, which is odd that they have different colored buses and bus stops. Uh, most cities might have similar colors. The larger and richer the city, I will also say, the more likely they are to use standalone streetlights, which you can see trailing off on this road to the distance. Smaller cities and towns usually attach streetlights directly to their utility poles, but lots of overlap there. The next largest city in Alberta is Edmonton. I live here, so maybe that's why I feel like I have the most clues to pinpoint it. Edmonton is an easy one for me. This is classic Edmonton coverage. It's flat, like every city we're going to cover other than Calgary, and we have the classic yellow and blue fire hydrant. Actually, right now in December, the classic color is snow white, but yellow and blue is a pretty common col color combination in North America for hydrants. Uh, but when you combine the fact that every nozzle, top and sides, is blue, and the general landscape, the fire hydrant usually makes it a very easy Edmonton guess. About 10% of fire hydrants use different nozzle colors, um, but they will be on both the top and the sides, which isn't true in most cities, honestly. And in those cases, it might be a harder Edmonton guess. But we have more. The streetlights in Edmonton have two unique clues. About 60% of streetlights have this red sticker, which you can just make out if you're watching on a big screen. It's above the electric, electric box. It says, warning, high voltage. And if you see the red sticker, you are 100% in Edmonton. After a few years, uh, these stickers tend to fade and become more white. And white stickers are easier to confuse with some other stuff on a, on a streetlight. But it's still a really good Edmonton clue. The other Edmonton streetlight, it sits on top of a metal box, something like what's shown here. And this might be about 20% of the streetlights, which has a remaining 20%, which just look like a streetlight from any other city. Um, but, you know... Not every coverage can be perfect. Also, I will say, whether you see this red sticker, it'll always be on the left side of the road um, for where you're looking. So if you have the wrong view, you shouldn't expect to see it anyway. It's only on one side. Edmonton Transit is all uh, fairly rich blue. Blue buses, blue bus stop signs, and somewhat uniquely is a blue top to the bus shelter. I find that in most cities, even nice cities with nice transit stop um, transit systems, 
you will still see just kind of a gray top to the bus shelter. And so this is a really nice Edmonton clue as well. Edmonton has a lot of alley coverage, which is the final thing to say here. And Edmonton was very late to get a municipal bin system. So in later coverage, you can see black and green bins. They came in like two years ago. But in alleyway coverage, which tends to be from 2015 or earlier, you'll only see the random plastic or metal bins that people bought at uh, Canadian Tire, I suppose. And I actually think this would be a very safe NMPZ guess uh, for all of North America if I got this round. I would say almost certainly Edmonton. Now let's jump to Red Deer, and that's located between the last two cities. Uh, it's very easy to confuse with Edmonton or Calgary, naturally. Uh, the main thing to note is the lime green fire hydrant, like Calgary but without the black nozzles. And this color is unique to Red Deer and some surrounding towns. Finally, we'll do Lethbridge in Alberta. Lethbridge has red fire hydrants, and it's the first big city we've covered with red fire hydrants. You could confuse it with Medicine Hat, which is generally a bit richer, and it has hillier because it's in a, a coulee. Or you could confuse it with Fort McMurray, along with a lot of other small towns near these cities. Um, and Fort McMurray simply looks like it's further north, but that's also a good time to talk about street signs. Street signs were very inconsistent in BC, which is why I mostly just ignored them, but they can be very useful in the prairies. Most cities use green street signs, as we see here, compared to the blue street signs you see in the rural coverage. But Fort McMurray is one exception for Alberta. It uses blue street signs. And you should also pay attention, if you want, to the use of cardinal directions after the street name. Um, because I live in Edmonton and I can easily recognize the Edmonton font, I might be able to take better advantage of this than some of you. Um, but you can start to learn that, say, Calgary and Medicine Hat always use Northwest, Southwest, Northeast, etc. Whereas cities like Lethbridge and there are some other cities and smaller towns will use just North, South, East, West. Um, and so seeing a green street sign uh, it looks like this that doesn't have a northwest or a north after it is also usually a really good clue that I'm in Edmonton if I have the general prairie vibe. Lethbridge also has a lot of alleyway coverage, but this is just a reminder and a comparison. If I'm in an alleyway like this, I don't think I'm in Edmonton because we have the garbage bin. And so this would be a good Lethbridge guess. It could be a good Calgary guess. I'm not saying it's only Lethbridge, but uh, that's the idea. Moving on to Saskatchewan and the largest city of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So Saskatoon can look a lot like Edmonton, I think, but I wasn't joking when I said that Alberta does have a stronger economy. And now that we're in Saskatchewan, you should expect to see smaller houses, more streetlights attached to the wooden utility poles, and that's even in the largest city. Now, the main way to tell them apart is definitely the license plates on the back of the vehicles. Saskatchewan uses a lot of, Saskatoon, sorry, uses a lot of different yellow fire hydrants. So it'll be yellow body with black, all yellow, red nozzles. Um, so it can imitate a lot of different cities uh, that have that yellow bodied hydrant. Um, the biggest challenge is differentiating Saskatoon from Regina. Regina is a lot easier to recognize than Saskatoon though. So for one, it's not just the fire hydrants. They use almost exactly the same fire hydrants as Saskatoon. But there are two things that make Regina easy. Number one, we have blue street signs. I think it's the only large prairie city that uses blue street signs. And notably for Saskatchewan, it's almost a deadlock. If you know you're in Saskatchewan and you see a blue street sign, you can go directly to Regina. Now, we also have these brown garbage bins. And you'll see these brown bins all over Regina. Can you guess the only other region that uses brown bins in the entire world that I know? That's right, California's Central Valley. I am going to trust you to tell the difference between Regina and cities around Fresno. Now, I took a break from transit service for the smaller cities, but I'll just pop the bus designs for Regina and Saskatoon in here. They're both based on a blue or light blue theme, so it quickly becomes hard to remember. Uh, the one easy thing to remind you about is that Edmonton has the blue tops to the bus shelters, so Edmonton is special. These, you know, you can remember them if you want. Moving on to Winnipeg, which is the capital of Manitoba. Winnipeg is an easy one to guess. So notice these fire hydrants in the center of the screen. It's fairly small. 
they use a red fire hydrant with an orange pole, and the orange pole is important. Uh, this is the first fire hydrant pole that we've seen. They actually get more common further east, because I believe they're in case the fire hydrant gets entirely covered in snow. However, for this part of the country, the fire hydrant is very distinctive. I once managed a Winnipeg guest just because I saw a bit of an orange pole poking out behind a tree. Winnipeg has two other guineas. Uh, the Manitoba license plate on the front of every car. It's got the and the white street signs. Now white is a very rare color for this part of North America, so it can make Winnipeg a very easy guess. Uh, Winnipeg also, due to its history, is a little bit more likely to use bilingual signs. So you m I don't think on this street sign, but you might see a French and English uh, road marking in Winnipeg, which you wouldn't see in other prairie cities. And it would be an easy guess in Winnipeg if not for Dauphin. So I'm going to mention one circle town or city. Dauphin has the exact same fire hydrants, the same street signs, similar architecture, everything to Winnipeg, but it's only like 10,000 people. So Winnipeg will always be the safer guess. Also, Winnipeg, city of a million people or so, has a real transit system that Dauphin won't have. So nice round bus shelters, a very recognizable blue transit system symbol here with a T, and these fairly generic white buses as well. Last, let's cover Brandon, which is the second largest city in Manitoba, but still a lot smaller than Winnipeg. Now, I only want to talk about the fire hydrants, and they vary between the extremely faded yellow hydrants that look like they need to be replaced in the older coverage, and the post-2018 fire hydrants. They are replaced, and they look exactly like the Calgary hydrants, as we already said. Now let's recap our knowledge on this map before we go on to the rural stuff. And it includes garbage bins for every major city on this map. So the important thing to remember is that Regina has that beige brown bin. And most common by far in these cities and even the smaller towns is to have a black and a blue bin at least. Edmonton bucks that trend by not having a blue bin, as well as Lethbridge does not have a blue bin. Uh, again, Edmonton, in a lot of the older coverage, doesn't have any bins at all. They just have whatever metal bins people happen to have. Most of these large cities are easy to identify with a little practice. If you combine the city size, the street signs, the garbage bins, and the fire hydrants, there's almost no overlap, no guessing. One of those things is often sufficient, and if I can judge two of them, I feel like I always get the city. The best way for you to join me on that is with a little practice. So I've linked two maps in the video description. The first is a map to the major cities outlined with the stars, and then a second new map features even the small cities that are shown in the circles. Warning, all of these, not all of them, but a lot of the city choices here are pretty arbitrary. So just it's useful to get a, a general outline of the biggest ones, at least. Back to the main map, and we're going to finish off with a little rural meta. I'll start with a reminder of the holy trinity of rural intersections. The Alberta Blue Street Sign, the Saskatchewan White Arrow, and the Manitoba Green and White. Let's start with Alberta. The first target is finding some way to differentiate the Peace region of the Northwest, and then the rest you can often guess a lot based on the geography. So this region in the Peace is perfect for growing, can growing canola. Canola oil, canola um, grain is grown in these yellow fields here. This is what it looks like, I think, later in the growing season. And you can see these yellow canola fields elsewhere for sure, but canola loves the long summer days and it doesn't mind the shorter growing season. So this is one of the best canola regions in the entire world. And if you see these yellow fields, at least consider northwestern Alberta. But next, what's weird about this picture? It's a normal Alberta intersection with a green road sign. And there's a few, uh, that, that's common in a few areas up in the Peace region and really nowhere else. It's not everything in the Peace region. A lot of it still uses the blue signs. But if you see the green sign, almost certainly there, unless you're confusing it with Manitoba. So check the bollards, things like that again. Now let's talk more about these rural signs in Alberta. They refer to either Township Road or Range Road. You can see TWP is Township Road, RGE, Range Road. You can barely see it there. The Township Roads run east-west, horizontal, and the Range Roads run north-south down Alberta. And the numbering system is actually extremely consistent. It increases by one every mile. To help, I've written down the minimum numbers and maximum numbers on this map, either on the top for the range roads or kind of down the middle for the township roads. So the only catch is that the range roads reset at every longitude marker. 
So let's use these signs as examples. It, if you have time, you can scroll into the map and find exactly what road you're on based on that numbering system. But even if you don't have time or you don't want to do the time, if you can learn the general numbers here, it can really help you to guess your north-southness uh, if you have enough, if you're close enough to see the numbers. So for the left, let's say, it says we're on Township Road 201. So the border with the USA is 10 down here, and Grand Prairie is roughly 715. I chose Grand Prairie because there aren't really that many township roads north of there. So 201 might lie somewhere just south of Calgary, something around here. And we don't know how far east or west. On the right, we have Township Road 102, if you can read it, and Range Road 190. Don't worry about the dashes. Township Road 102 is pretty far south. So that'd be just above Lethbridge. And then Range Road 190 could be in two places in Alberta, but not this far south. You couldn't have a 190 that's this far south if you can see my laser pointer, because that would be over in BC um, if you crossed that longitudinal marker. So we know we must be about two thirds of the way between the two meridians, close to Lethbridge in any case. Uh, now, rural Saskatchewan can be really hard to region guess in. I'll be straight up. The main thing to remember is that there are more trees the further you go north. That said, roads in Saskatchewan, they tend to be a bit lower quality than Alberta. And especially these patchwork roads, I find especially common in the southwest corner of the province. Um, the underground cable markers that I introduced in part one are also a really important thing to bring up here because they're very useful for distinguishing uh, yourself in the prairies from the USA. It's a metal pole with this cone of usually orange on top. The most co common color is orange in every province, but in Saskatchewan, sometimes it'll have yellow or white, and that can ensure that you know you're in Saskatchewan. Now, my main rural tip for Manitoba relates to snow meta, but I'll combine that with some rural snow coverage in Alberta as well. A lot of the lakes region north of Winnipeg has this October snow coverage. So you expect to see snow on the ground, but still a lot of leaves in the trees. And then there's some winter coverage in Southern Alberta as well. But last and maybe least, I wanna briefly mention soil color because I definitely get vibes from soil color. But in trying to present this, I realized just how possible it is, impossible it is to make any firm rules. Um, the soil colors look different, whether the sun, there's sunlight or clouds, whether it's wet or dry. The only advice I can give you is that parts of Manitoba are outside of the prairies proper, and as such, they can sometimes demonstrate different soil properties, either very white soil or kind of a reddish soil, especially close to the lakes like Manitoba, areas like that. It depends on conditions. And this is a theoretical map of soil color in the prairies, but I really need to emphasize how impossible it is to use as written. If anything, it just reinforces that in this kind of shape, the prairies tend to look somewhat similar, even though the soil color is hard to coach. Uh, you might start to get a feel for it. So we return to our original three images, and we'll cover what we learned. So immediately, I see an urban landscape with an all-yellow fire hydrant, a beige garbage bin, and a blue street sign. This is the easiest Regina NMPZ of your life. Lock in. The next picture, we've got Alberta bollards over here and to the left of the car. We have a blue road sign telling us the township and range road coordinates. And we also have a 403 area code on this sign, which indicates Southern Alberta. There are enough trees that I would go pretty far north in that Southern Alberta range. And finally, we have a Manitoba round. We can tell because of the bollard and the green and white on the stop sign, not to mention the license plate, the front plate. We also see a lot of aspen trees that should scream Manitoba, and we see patches of snow over here in the gutter, and that'll push us up north towards uh, Winnipeg near Lake Manitoba. Want to review what we've covered today? I recommend just playing this Canadian Prairies map. I checked through it quickly. It's got everything you need just to hammer these points home. Link in the description. So once again, I hope you've all learned something. Next week, we'll be covering Ontario, uh, which should be a totally different experience because it's only one province. I'm crossing my fingers, it'll be a bit shorter too. But I guess we'll see. Don't get lost out there, folks.